Well, hello there, my fellow rushers. How are you doing today? King Rex here, and we did it. We reached 400 subscribers yesterday. Like, wowzers, man. I can't believe that we actually achieved this goal at this pacing. I wasn't expecting it, so thanks a lot. Your support is much appreciated. I appreciate every comment and every like, and of course, every minute that you spend of your time watching my videos. It really motivates me every time to think about something new. And for today, I decided to do something special, because pretty much I've missed my 200 and 300 subscribers milestone, which I really feel bad about. I decided to redeem myself by doing something for my 400 subscribers. And we we're gonna be doing a tier list. Basically, we'll be ra ranking every hero from the Kingdom Hearts saga. As you can see, the whole gang is here, in their beautiful glory. However, there will be some exceptions. And by exceptions, I mean secondary heroes. Because you can only use them in one level, and you can only face them up against specific enemies. It's really hard to judge them, and I don't feel like they will be properly rated. So yeah, let's talk about the tiers. We have the E tier for the very bad ones. We have D tier for heroes that are outclassed. We have the C tier for heroes that could be better. Like, they're not terrible, but they need some improvements. B tier is for the decent and fun ones, which are usually more of a fun hero to play with rather than a super good hero. A tier is for the really good ones, S tier is for one of the strongest, and Bass is for... Well, you can read it yourself. So yeah, with that out of the way, let us commence. Starting off with Gerald Lightseeker, a pretty decent hero, not gonna lie. But he kinda lacks crowd control, but he's pretty tanky. Yeah, I'll put him in B tier, kind of decent one. Moving on to Illyria, uh, barely any damage, barely any stalling power, and her cat is straight up garbage on iOS. E tier, into the bottom of the barrel. Someone has to take this throw, and you fit perfectly for it. Malik Hammer Fury? Actually, I think he's better than Gerald, now that I think about it. Sure, he starts off a little bit weak, but once you level him up, he gets pretty tanky, and he can he also deal his, uh, basically his, mul his multiple abilities do true area damage, and his second one actually can stun, and it has bigger area as he levels up, so... I feel like he is better, because he can still deal with single targets later on, but he can also deal with crowds as well, so he's slightly better than Gerald. Bolin, uh, as much as I would want to put you in D, I can't find enough reasons to put you there. Sorry man, into the E tier. Sure, you're a little bit, you have a decent amount of health, but the mines are really bad, they barely do anything. Your slowdown is fine, but it doesn't last for all that long, or I don't know what it is, I just don't find it to be all that great. Plus, your way of attack is a little bit iffy. I don't know. I don't know what it is, I just can't find him to be all that great. Moving on to Magnus Spellbane, classic, into the A tier. Pretty decent, although he relies a lot on barracks. I mean, if you don't have barracks, you have to pretty much put him away on the outskirts and hope that he is gonna do a good enough job. But, I don't know. But, still. He can reduce armor pretty quickly, and he is a pretty decent overall. Ignis? Oh. We all know where he is going, into the best tier. Broken, man. So broken. True damage for basic attacks, fast attack rate, fast mobility, destroys crowds, can heal himself, and he has a good, good amount of health to the point where he can actually stall some of the tougher enemies. Really solid hero. <laughs> Definitely broken, in my opinion. King Dinus, pretty interesting case. I kinda like him because he deals a pretty decent damage and his boost ability it can be nice, you know, 20% extra attack speed and range for every tower, but uh, I don't think he is quite as good as I remember him to be. Into the C tier you go. I feel like with some improvements here and there, you could be definitely right next to Gerald, but unfortunately, that's not the case. Moving on to Alora, <laughs> S tier, easy. like. She can deal with almost everything. She has really good crowd control. She has really good amount of utility, which is very unique for a mage at least. And yeah, she is just straight up awesome. The only thing that she sucks against is magic resistant enemies, which could affect her leveling up early on. Especially if you're doing a level where you have a lot of spiders like Sarogas Lair. Moving on to Ingvar. Ingvar Bearclaw is kind of an iffy one. He's kind of in between B and A. Because he's similar to Gerald, but he has better dura durability, and he provides with a pretty decent amount of stalling power due to the ancestors that he summons. And they're not that bad of a stalling power, so you know what? I'm gonna bump him up to the A tier. I feel like he is a pretty decent. 
I, I think he is sli quite. I don't know. I, I just I just want to put him in A. All right. <laughs> Moving on to Hexel. Now this may surprise you, but it is the truth. Hexel isn't that great. Sure, Instakill is awesome, but w what else? Like having being tanky. Geralt and Malik are already pretty tank heroes. Uh, never mind, he also has really slow mobility. The slowest, actually, out in this game at least. His attack damage is kinda meh, and his crowd control ability is pretty lackluster. Sure, he can bounce, it can bounce around multiple enemies, but it only deals 45 true damage. And even though it's true damage, 45 damage is not a lot. Moving on to Oni. Yeah, we all know where he's going. S tier. Really solid. Tanky. Provides with pretty good crowd control good for single targets and he is immune to demon explosions which makes him really useful for pit of fire and pandemonium especially moving on to tor tor this may a little i want to put him in s but the reason why i'm gonna put him in a tier actually is simple he doesn't have how do i say it his leveling up is a little bit questionable because his first ability is rng Basically, every time he performs a basic attack, there's a 25% chance for uh, to create this kind of like a Tesla attack. But the thing is that his attack rate is very slow, every 2 seconds. So, yeah, the leveling up is kind of iffy. Sometimes you're gonna get him up pretty quickly, sometimes you have to, you have to wait quite a long time. So, because of this inconsistency and the fact that his secondary ability can miss, I'm gonna put him in A. He's still a pretty good hero, though. Moving on to the heroes from Kingdom Hearts Frontiers. Starting off with Auric, or Garlic, pretty much. I mean, just add the G and he pretty much becomes Garlic. <laughs> kind of funny, but that's not, the, that's not the case. That's not what we're talking about for now. We're talking about his stats, and he's pretty solid. But I don't think he is quite into the S tier. I know this may shock some of you, but into the A tier he goes. This is my A tier list, and if you don't like it, make your own. Moving on to Mirage. Hmm... She's kind of like Illyria, but she's actually pretty decent for some cases. She can she has 60% chance to dodge any upcoming melee attacks, and she can dash backwards and keep on shooting, which is pretty good. And she also has this ability that can insta-kill from time to time. And yeah, I'm gonna put her in D. She's still outclassed, but hey, she is uh, not too bad. Moving on to Cronan, pretty much a weaker version of Auric. Pretty bad. The boars, they have a too slow of a respawn rate and they don't provide as much stalling power as you may want them to be. The stampede is RNG, his w thorny wipe ability doesn't do enough damage, his regeneration is fine but he do he it's not gonna keep him up again, in a it's not gonna keep him up in a long fight against like brutes or um, abominations and etc. And the falcon attacks every once every blue moon so... Yeah, he definitely has a lot of bad things, but you know what? Since I played with him a long time a long time ago and I kind of enjoyed him, I'm gonna b bump you up to the C tier. You get lucky there. But don't look at me like this. You know that you're not that good. However, here his, is his power opposite, Bruxa. Easy S tier. Really good sy synergy with her abilities. Dread Aura, which can slow down enemies by 30% just by being near Bruxa. Being able to shoot while you're moving due to the skulls, doing true damage to the same any target. I mean, she can pretty much take down any flying enemies by herself, with maybe a little bit of help with the reinforcements, but that's awesome. Especially if you're doing a challenge where you're trying to beat the game with only barracks. Really useful hero. Moving on to Captain Blackthorn. Pretty fun hero. The having the ability to generate extra gold is always a plus, but I don't find him to be too outstanding, so I'll put him in B. He is kind of decent. The Edger on the other hand, mm, eh, just really bad. Why would you even use her? But to be honest, she is pretty tanky and she provides with a pr pr pretty solid support. So you know what? I'll bump you up, up to the D tier. I don't feel like you're very bad, you're just outclassed. If you did somewhat of a decent damage or you had abilities that do actual damage and not just all out support, you maybe would have been into the seat, but eh, I can't put you any higher than D. Moving on to Nivus. Kind of interesting hero, the concept is cool. 
he has decent abilities, but the Disintegrate is pretty much the weakest insta-kill in the game. The missiles are a bit questionable as far as aiming goes. And yeah, he is pretty much the squishiest in the game. C tier. You feel I feel like you need some improvements. Now we're moving on to Grawl, and he is a little bit hard to rate. Because even though he is tanky, you know, I don't feel like he is too good because of his slow mobility and terrible regeneration. But his crowd control is quite nice and he can deal with most enemies. Plus, he helped me a lot on my magic only attempt on Kingdom Hearts Frontiers. So, you know what? With a little bit of a respect left, I'm gonna bump you up to the low end of the A tier. I feel like he is kind of there. Shatra. Oh. Yeah, Shatra Estir, pretty much. Every one of his abilities deals true damage, his basic attacks do true damage. Sure, he's not too tanky, 400 health and medium armor, it's not perfect, but it is decent. And if he dies, he can explode and take up quite a few enemies with him. It's not like a tiny explosion like it was in Iron Marines, no, 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 this is a pretty solid explosion. And he's pretty much the only hero that has any sort of death effect, which is pretty interesting. Moving on to Karknos. Ah, uh, sad case. I know that he can tank quite a lot due to his invulnerability, because you know it happens pretty often. Every he has 65% chance to to trigger it every time he receives a melee hit. I'm pretty sure it also works for ranged attacks though, so yeah, basically every time he gets he receives any sort of damage, he has a chance to trigger it. But the rest of his abilities are kind of lackluster, so I'll bump you up to the C tier. I feel like you're, you're not anywhere close to the B or A tier. With some improvements you definitely could be though. Kutsao on the other hand? Kutsao is actually kinda nice. I started paying a lot more attention to him recently and I learned that he is not too, not too bad. He's kinda like a gloss cannon but he can also sustain himself due to the crane style and snake style and he can dash out quite a lot of damage. I feel like he's into the B tier. He's pretty fun to use from time to time. Maybe not the best for the post game but hey. Is fun to use nonetheless. Dante on the other hand, oh, he is actually one of my personal favorites. Now this may be a little bit of an overestimated, but I'm gonna put him into the S tier. I feel like he deserves it. He has one of everything. He has crowd control, he has an ability that helps out against tough enemies, he can break armor or magic resistance pretty frequently might I add. He also can silence up enemies and he can just boost your guys to do 50% more damage just by staying near them. Sure, it's only their basic attacks, but hey, this is a pretty interesting. And speaking of interesting, he can, you can also move him around while he's dead, which, and he's the only hero that allows you to do that, so definitely a bonus point for this. Ah, uh, kind of... Oof, Cass, come on, man. Why'd you make me do this? I really love you. You were the first hero that I've ever purchased in Frontiers, and I have a special place for you in my heart. But when you're compared to everyone else, your lack of control and unpredictability kinda destroys you. But because you have a pretty decent stat, I'm gonna put you in C. If you had a little bit of a better... If, if the player had a little bit of a better control over you, maybe you will be into the B tier, but I can't quite put you there. Satan? Eh, I don't know. I don't have much to say about him. He's pretty fun. He's a fun hero to use from time to time. I'll bump him up to B. Ashbite on the other hand, oh no 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 no. Just no. Nope, seven dollars hero, straight up garbage. Sure, true damage. You may be thinking that's awesome because his basic attacks do true damage, but so does Shatra, and he's five dollars, and he deals much better job. And the, the weird thing is that he's this dragon is meant to be good for crowd control, but I find him to be struggling actually against crowds from from time to time, which is kind of weird. And to be honest, his pattern of attacks is pretty messed up. And the fact that he has a chancy insta kill on a really long cooldown. And. Ah, just no. Why would you even use him? Don't buy Ashbite. You're gonna be very disappointed with your life. But what you should buy, however, is Bonehard. Because he is definitely into the best here. Amazing hero. Chain reactions left and right, exploding enemies, doing true damage in the process. And just giving you some extra stalling power, which is very unique for a dragon at least. And yeah. For what was there to say about him? Just straight up awesomeness. Moving on to Kingdom of Origins. Eridan? Eridan is kind of nice. He's a pretty decent hero, but some of you may be tempted to put in C for some reason, but I want to put him on the low end of B. I feel like he is just barely hanging into the B tier. 
he's pretty fun to use, but I feel like if he did a little bit more damage here and there, I would put him in A, but I don't feel like he is quite there. Arrival, on the other hand, he's pretty good, because his basic attacks do true damage. Sure, slow attack rate sucks, but true damage for a free hero is very unique. And on top of that, pr pretty much all of his abilities do true damage. The stones can protect him for quite a long time. And the tornado is nice, but I feel like it has a little bit of a too long cooldown. But other than the tornado's cooldown, he's a pretty good hero. I'll put him in A. Moving on to Kata. Now, a lot of people praise Kata like she is one of the best things ever, and she kind of is, but I don't find her to be as appealing, at, le at least to me. And I'll put her into the B tier. Now, some of you may be angry at it, but come on. You gotta admit, she is... Mm, Alright, and maybe I'll put her in A, but nah, this is my tier list. I don't feel like she is quite there, but just for the sake of it, I'm gonna move her a little bit closer to the high end of the B tier. Moving on to Ryzen Rex, kind of an interesting hero. It ha he has a pretty unique mechanics, but they work a little bit goofy from time to time and it's kind of hard to use. But due to a game-breaking bug that I've discovered recently, I'm gonna put him into the B tier. Yeah, I know, it's kind of weird, but whatever, I'm gonna put him there. I'm gonna show it eventually, but holy crap, is it a really good bug. To... Moving on to Lilith now. Lilith, why? Just why? Why did you make me do this? I love you, but at the same time, outclassed. Too much RNG, and especially on your ultimate. The ultimate ability should be something that guarantees something will happen. Why are you gonna do area damage, you're gonna kill someone, you're gonna give yourself some stalling power, but with you, you never know what's gonna happen. So, yeah. I'm sorry for this, but that's just the way it is. Rexon, on the other hand, actually, I don't know if I should put him in A. His crowd control is kinda whack, and his um, crowd control attack is pretty underwhelming. And you pretty much need to keep him up near enemies that are dying almost constantly in order for him to keep up his health. So combining that with the, can with the low damage, even though he has fast attack rate, his d damage output is not too great, I'll still put him in B. He's pretty fun to use, but I don't think he is one of the best. Prince Dinos, uh, another hero that I really like, but at the same time I have to be honest with myself. <sighs> You're pretty fun to use though, and your design is quite cute, but D tier, outclassed. There's so many other heroes that do your job better, so I can't give you quite a high rating, unfortunately. Moving on to Zin, Zin is kind of iffy. He has some good abilities here and there. His pseudo teleport is kind of nice. His special ability can can do a lot of damage and stall for quite a while. Plus, it has a really short cooldown. But the rest of his abilities are kind of iffy, and he has slow attack rate with not that high damage. Mm, C tier. I can't give you any higher than that, Paul. Moving on to Lin. <laughs> Lin, I don't know. Some of you may not may think that this is a little bit too much, but I'm gonna put her in S. She is kind of like Rexon, only instead of being like good, good at one thing, she is actually good at mood buildings. She can do. She can deal with crowds pretty well due to her special ability. She has pretty good crowd control due to her um, second curse. She she is really good for single targets. I mean, she's she's just awesome, man. Plus, 45% of every of of every attack, uh, basically, every time she receives a hit, there's a 45% chance that this attack will miss. No matter if it's melee attack, ranged attack, group damage attack, it has a chance to miss her, making her one of the tankiest and hardest to kill heroes ever. So yeah, with a little bit of a biasness, I'm gonna put her in S. Moving on to good old Daddy Vesnan. Eh, I don't know. He's pretty good. Eh, I'm gonna put him in A. Now, if his demon came up, came back a little bit faster, I'll, I'll put him in S. But I don't feel like he is quite there. You're still pretty good though. Drax. <laughs> Some of you may be tempted to put him to the best here. But... To be honest, I'll put him on the high end of S. The reason why I'm putting him there is because it's not like he deals his job poorly. No, no, no. He is awesome if he's in the right hands. But because he is really squishy, at, sitting at only 460 health and no armor, and 70 to 25 damage. And on top of that, he requires really heavy micro. So 
it ca he's kind of dependable. If it's in the wrong hands, he's definitely not as good. But if he is in the right hands, he will be definitely S tier. And because I'm kind of good with him, I'm gonna put him in S. He definitely deserves this spot. Moving on to Brave Arc, pretty fun to use, not gonna lie. I, I don't know how good he is, but I don't know. I don't play with him too often, even though I've made a few challenges where I tried him out. And, and you know what? I'll bump him up, up to the A tier. I kind of like him. I like playing with him from time to time. Bruce, on the other hand, ooh, Bruce, my guy. Pretty good, not gonna lie. Sure, he doesn't have any group damage attacks, but he doesn't need them because of his bleed ability. Sure, it only has 10% chance of occurring, but because he attacks at a pretty good at pretty good rate, you can actually get it pretty often. And he just shreds enemies that are bleeding, man. Destroying them. Having the highest health in the game as well, and also having the, these lions that can stall enemies and do true damage, S tier. Maybe a little bit of a too high of a rating, but I feel like he is what he deserves to be there. Boss, on the other hand, oh man, he's so so good for certain things. But you know what? I'm gonna put him into the A tier. Now, the, the reason why I'm putting him there is pretty simple. His cooldowns are way too long. Yeah, the cooldowns for his abilities are too long, and they're not quite too strong or overpowerful. Plus, his special ability is kinda uncreative, it's just liquid fire times 3. And sure, 630 true area damage and a pretty wide spread is good, but it's kinda hard to use on some maps, and because of that, I can't quite put him into the S tier. I still like him though, not gonna lie. Moving on to Wilbur, easy S tier, really good hero, solid all around, there's nothing bad about him. Well, maybe there is, the movement speed upgrade is kinda lack. Luster, you know, I don't feel like that should have been there, but at the same time, the amount of damage that he provides and uh, and the dro the pew pew drones that can that have infinite range, I feel like it covers up for one mistake. And we have, of course, Phoenix, classic broken hero, five seconds respawn rate, doing a bunch of area damage, true damage, gashing out of. I mean, she she's she's literally the embodiment of Gloss Cannon. Only instead of being afraid that she's gonna die, you kind of want to let her die because there's no consequences. Every 5 seconds she's gonna respawn, so yeah, definitely a bass hero. Into the bass tier you go. And we're left with Vengeance. The worst game out of them all, but let's see if the heroes are as bad as the game. Starting off with Varuk, mm, kind of meh, not gonna lie, just walking barracks. It doesn't provide all that much. Sure, the bonus... The bonus damage that he gets for staying on the same target is nice, but at the same time, if the target has high armor or deals a lot of damage, he's not going to be able to achieve all that high of a damage boost, so... Into the D tier you go. I feel like you're a little bit outclassed. Moving on to Ezra. Ezra is pretty good. So, um, I'll put her into the A tier. She is a quite a decent hero, if I do say so myself. I don't find her to be super good or anything, but, you know... She could be fun to play around with from time to time. Oh look, oh look is kind of interesting. I don't find them to be too great game breaking. Like the teleport is really nice if you use it against proper enemies. But I don't know, I don't find them to be too outstanding. But he's pretty fun to use due to the teleport mechanic. It can definitely, you can definitely try out some interesting strategies with him. So I'm gonna put him in B. Margos on the other hand, depends. Now, if her special ability worked the way it was supposed to be, I, I won't give her this rating, but because it is broken, I'm gonna put her in A. The thing is that her special ability is meant to last only 20 seconds, but as long as she is fighting, she's not gonna exit out of the beast for making her one of the stronger heroes. And she's really cheap on top of that, only, only measly $3. She's definitely a worthy hero to buy. And her other abilities are not too bad as well. Moving on to Mortimus, kind of a sad case. I like him, but and I start paying a lot more respect to, towards him, but at the same time, the Grim Presence and the uh, Undead Servitude kind of mm, disable each other in a way. The issue is that the zombies can spawn way further than the range of the Grim Presence, and in order for the Grim Presence to be efficient, you have to move Mortimus slightly. 
and, he, and eventually you have to move him closer and closer and closer until he exits out of the choke point. And at this point, you don't have much use out for him. I like the fact that he can slurp of hell though, kind of like Margosa, so eh, I'm gonna put him in C. He's kind of good, but he, he needs some improvements for sure. Jack Lantern? Jack Lantern is an interesting case. I like him, but I feel like he is a little bit questionable at times. Like, some visibilities are good, some visibilities are bad, but I guess if he's in the right hands, he could be a B tier. I feel like he is pretty fun to use, though. Maybe not the best, but he's definitely one of the more quirky heroes, if I do say so myself. Tramon? Eh, Tramon. I don't know, man. I don't have much to say about you. You're not. You're kind of lackluster. Just outclassed. I do like your ultimate, though. If only it did true damage. But it, sadly, it, it deals physical damage. And it also has a really long cooldown. Anyway, moving on. Junpai. Oh, Junpai. You know what? I don't know what you say. S tier. Now, this may be too much, but as I said, Junpai is kind of like Dante in a way. He can deal with almost everything. He has good crowd control, he has support, utility, he's good for single targets, maybe not the best but he's decent, and he can get a damage boost just by staying in the battle. <laughs> what there's not to like. Pretty good hero all around. Moving on to Jigo, or the boss killer as I like to call him, pretty good hero, but I don't feel like he is one of the strongest. If we're talking about durability he definitely is, but we're not, we're not take, talking about durability only. His mobility is the slow. He has the slowest mobility in the game. His attack rate is pretty meh. Some of his his special ability. Sorry, his special ability is kind of iffy, and I don't find it to be fitting sometimes. And it has quite a long cooldown and for not too much damage. So I'll put him in A. He's still a pretty good hero though. Oh, uh, Doom Tank. Doom Tank. I don't know. He's kind of iffy because on the mobile version only. I'm not sure if it's the same on iOS, but I'm pretty sure it's, it works on Android. Basically, his ability is blocked and it does way more damage than it should. In reality, it should do only 240 damage or so. And that's pretty underwhelming for having a really long cooldown. And sadly, on the Steam version, it works properly, and that makes me realize that he's actually not too strong. Sure, just having a special ability that sucks is, you know, kind of sad, but his attack is one of the highest, one of the strongest, dealing between 101 to 188 explosive damage, meaning that he can ignore 50% armor, which makes him super good. I mean, the only issue other than that is multiple abilities. The, I'm talking about the expendables because sometimes they forget to block once you upgrade them up to tier 3, and that makes me really want to punch someone in the dick sack. Moving on to the, what was it called, flamethrower ability, it's pretty underwhelming, even though it does, I, I, I'm not, actually I'm not sure if it deals true damage, so be, because of some, because, because he is, I don't know, uh, I, I'm just gonna put him in uh, meh, into the A tier, I can't quite put you into the S tier man, I don't feel like you're quite there, In the early, back in the early days when these two weren't existing, you probably will be S tier, but right now, I can't put you any higher than this. Moving on to Beerset, a pretty interesting case, I would say a pretty balanced hero, but the thing is that he has two abilities that are really good and the rest of it is kind of whack, and you know, it's kind of underwhelming. Now some of you may say that the, uh, what was it called, uh, I, I can't remember, his passive ability where he can generate extra gold just by killing enemies near him. Actually, I learned that apparently, thanks to Voduk, I learned that it only works on enemies that he himself kills. Not killed by any other towers or abilities, just by himself. Which makes it pretty redundant, so I'm gonna put you in A. I still feel like you're enjoyable though. Merglin on the other hand, yeah, Merglin, S tier at least. Really good hero, I mean come on. She, she's awesome. She deals true damage, true splash damage, by the way, underneath her. And that's awesome because dragons can attack, cannot attack people underneath them, which is really nice. She has... I would, I think she has the highest DPS in the game as far as basic attacks go, so that's really nice. And yeah, she is just a pretty solid hero. Plus her ultimate can insta-kill crowds of enemies, which is pretty ridiculous. 
but it has 90 seconds cooldown, so it kind of it's kind of even the out in a way. And of course, last but not the least, we also have the god, the, the big old bat, which is Ice God. Yep, Ice God is going definitely into the best here, on top, better than everyone else. Like he's he's ridiculous, man. True area damage with slowdown on already slow enemies, plus having ice ice spikes that do true damage, and they do basically the way they work is the tougher the enemy is, the more damage they're gonna do, which is just outrageous. And speaking of outrageous, his special ability can freeze the screen for 12 seconds. But well, there's not a like outstanding hero, really broken. I would say even more broken than Phoenix herself, at least in my opinion. And with that out of the way, this is pretty much every hero ranked based on my opinion, guys. That's gonna do it for the video. Now, believe it or not, this is the short version. I have made a version of this video where I talk a little bit more in detail about them and I have some gameplay footages playing on. But the issue is that the video, the video turned out to be over two hours long. So, I didn't want to post it, but who knows? Comment down below if you want to see the movie edition of this video, because it is quite long. And yeah, this is kind of the shortish a little bit version. I know it's a little bit scuffed for some heroes, but I just didn't want to make the video to be way too long. And yeah, with that out of the way, that's gonna do it, guys. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I appreciate you for sticking around to the end. Subscribe if you want to see more of this content in the future. And while you're at it, drop a like on the video. It means a lot to me. And I will see you in the next video. Until it comes, that was King Rexy. Over and out.